Chris Christie's troubles were easy pickings for late night comics. One thing he said did seem a little bit fishy to me. I was blindsided yesterday morning. I was done with my workout. He could have said he was on his roof putting ribbons on unicorns. It would have been more believable. Some say this could uh, ruin Christie's chances of being elected uh, president in 2016, while Hillary Clinton said, party! Well, clearly, somebody is getting thrown under the bus here. <laughs> Fortunately for them, the bus isn't moving. It's stuck in terrible, <laughs> terrible traffic. Okay, the round table is now ready to go. Former White House senior advisor and ABC contributor David Pluff, Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, ABC's Matthew Dowd, and Democratic strategist Donna Brazil. Welcome to you all. Matthew, I want to start with you if you can stop laughing. Uh, <laughs> let, let's talk about the way the Republicans approach this. We've heard from Lindsey Graham, the Drudge Report, Rush Limbaugh. I want to read something from Dan Balls in, in this morning's Washington Post. The coming GOP campaign is likely to be neither tidy nor predictable. A power struggle is underway between the party's establishment and insurgent wings, meaning the business elite and the populist Tea Party factions. So what do you see as the fallout for the Republicans from Chris Christie? What happened? Well, that's exactly why the importance of this, I think, has been raised so much, because this is uncharted territory for Republicans. They normally are lined up behind somebody, a dominant candidate that is coming in, that has all the money, that's going to be the nominee. It's been that way for 50, 60, 70 years. We now are in a situation in a nominating process that we're that the Republicans are faced with where they don't have a leading candidate. But the only one that was a preseason favorite in all of this was Chris Christie. He was the preseason favorite that could bridge the divide, that could work between the two opposing parts of the Republican Party, that could attract moderates. And they were so, but we're in this uncharted territory, and Chris Christie was the lighthouse that everybody could go to a safe harbor to. And now that's a question mark in people's minds. And so I think there's right now, among a lot of Republicans, there is a search. They have a tremendous opportunity, Martha. Republicans have a tremendous, this is an election that Republicans, if you look at historical patterns, should win the presidency in 2016, if you look at historical patterns. But they don't have a candidate, and they don't have a message that matches up well right now. And they have he, one that was just injured. Uh, yes. What are he, the Democrats? Well, you, well, first of all, he was winning the invisible primary because there was no one else visible. I mean, Chris Christie sort of popped on the national stage after Hurricane Sandy. He was the fix-it governor who didn't mind, you know, embracing President Obama. He was taking care of the people. He was telling teachers to shut up, sit down. And all of a sudden, this controversy erupts. His brand is now tarnished. He's in a no-win position. And the Republicans now have to go back to the drawing board to find someone like Chris Christie to run in 2016. Here's why. He, he, he won in a landslide in a blue state. He picked up women. He picked up uh, half the Hispanic vote, uh, one third of the Democratic vote. He was raising money, and now people will continue to raise questions as to whether or not he knew. And if I mean, I still can't believe that some woman on his staff, some deputy chief of staff, or some man, whoever, was the only person involved in shutting down a huge bridge. This is not the Mississippi River Bridge. This is the George Washington Bridge. And, and, and Donna, that takes us to the staff. Look, you worked in the White House for many, many years. I assume you're trying to please your boss. I assume you're trying to read your boss's mind. And you look at Chris Christie saying, I can't believe it happened. I just right. can't believe it happened. Well, I think that, and I think he, you know, what he, his performance this week shows some of the great appeal he has. But I did think he kind of got away with one thing, which is I've got 60,000 people working for me. How th These are very close people, his campaign manager, his deputy chief of staff. When I worked in the White House, every decision you made, you did with the thought of what would my boss think about this? You ran anything important by him. Now, my sense is he wouldn't have been so strong if he knew about this. But this investigation is going to be very torturous for them. He's up on a high wire if anything comes out. I think there's a lesson here, though, which is, you know, you're the governor of New Jersey. There's no TV stations in New Jersey. The scrutiny that he went under is nothing compared to what he is now. This is a withering spotlight. It's punishing nature. Few people can survive. So if he's able to get through this and his story holds up, he might be better for it. It's a lesson learned early. But I think there's a lot more shoes to drop here. They may not get to his closet, so to speak. But uh, these investigations, both by the news media, by uh, legal, uh, you know, the DOJ, and clearly in New Jersey, I think are going to turn up a lot more here. 
I, I just want to add to that quickly, though. I mean, keep in mind, and, and, and again, if he knew about this, we're going to find out, right? I, I don't think that's a whole my, different story. Right, it's not yeah. my position to, to, to find that out. But I think he took the bull by the horns. Uh, he's held people accountable. He fired people. And I think it's a, it is a very big difference than how this administration's handled a lot of things that have happened, whether it's IRS, whether it's Benghazi, whether it's the you can keep your health insurance if you want it. Uh, nobody's been fired over that, and what we're seeing is a, is a big difference. So I think if he comes out of this untarnished personally, this actually may really set him up for 2016. Big, big, I, want, I want to move on to this just quickly. B big story this week mm -hmm. that went away pretty quickly, and that's the publication of the book by Robert Gates, the defense secretary. I think he's the first defense secretary in history to write about a sitting president. But he also wrote about a couple of other people, speaking of 2016. He said about Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton. First of all, Joe Biden. I think he has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades on Hillary. Hillary told the president that her opposition to the 2007 surge in Iraq had been political because she was facing him in the Iowa primary. That offended Secretary Gates enormously. Pretty strong accusations. What does this do for the race for Biden and well, you know, if you read the book in its entirety, and I've, I've read only excerpts. I've I, read most of it. All right. Well, I mean, I still think he makes some good uh, policy statements that he agreed with the president on. In fact, he agreed with the vice president on the policy uh, in, in Libya uh, and agreed with Clinton on some things. So he makes a lot of personal uh, statements about these individuals. But you know what I didn't find in, in the excerpts? I didn't find any insight into national security. Some of the toughest decisions, this guy served at a time when we were in, embroiled in two wars from 2006 to 2011. And to come out with a book with some petty vindictive things, uh, I don't know. It's a long book. Does, does it change the race at all? Well, first of all, I'm not a fan of these kind of books anyway. I'm a fan of books that basically sort of add value to the sort of history and all that. I think these tell-all books that come out in the midst of an administration, and now people have the total right to do these kind of books. I don't think it's helpful on either side of the aisle for books to be written in the midst of a presidency. It's fine, write it afterwards. But I don't think he added much value. He, he said about Hillary, Hillary can be political at times and she's made decisions. Wow, that's, a, that's breaking news. Let, let's, that's let's fair, let me go very quickly around and we're, and we're gonna come back because you know very quickly, Hillary Clinton, Chris Christie, still the front runners a year from now? Sure, but you know, there's basically 50 lifetimes between now and then, so a lot's going to change. <laughs> Everything he said, but I would actually put Jeb Bush as a potential front runner too. I think the more he gets out, the more people are going to like what he has to say. I, I, I predict that a year from now, we're going to be talking about another candidate, some other candidate that has lit the fire in either party. Donna. I agree with Matt for a change. Okay, we'll go back and see those <laughs> in a year.